Sutra, but they should never say of themselves, "I am truly a Bodhisattva," or "I am truly an Arhat," or let the Buddha secret cause leak out by speaking casually to those who have not yet studied. Commentary, but they should never say of themselves, "I am truly a Bodhisattva." They might be Bodhisattvas, Arhat, or Buddhas who have come to this world. But even if it were Shakyamuni Buddha himself come again to this world, or Amitabha Buddha, or Medicine Master Buddha who dispels calamities and lengthens life, or Production of Jewels Buddha, or Accomplishment Buddha, or any other Buddha, or any Bodhisattva or Arhat, not one would ever say, "I am really a Bodhisattva." It's true, and you should believe me. I'm truly a Bodhisattva. One cannot speak like that if they say, "I'm truly an Arhat." Do you recognize me? Do you realize who I am? I'm an Arhat. Then you know they are part of the retinue of the Demon Kings. If someone praises you by saying that you are a Bodhisattva or an Arhat, you should not admit it, even if you are. You cannot let it out. You cannot let the Buddha secret. Cause a leak out. You should not reveal the secret cause of the Buddha by speaking casually to those who have not yet studied. You can't just nonchalantly reveal your origin. What is acceptable then? You can reveal it when you are about to die. Don't do it before you are ready to go. When you reveal it, then don't stay. As long as you are staying, don't reveal it. As soon as you reveal your origins, for example, that you are a transformation body of such and such a bodhisattva, then you should leave immediately. As long as the word is not out, you can stay here. But as soon as you let it be known, you wind up a lot of trouble on your hands if you don't go. Sutra, how can people who make such claims? Other than at the end of their lives, and then only to those who inherit the teaching, be doing anything but deluding and confusing living beings and indulging in a gross or false claim. Commentary: How can people who make such claims other than at the end of their lives, and then only to those who inherit the teaching? Between anything but deluding and confusing living beings, if you are a holy being, then at the end of your life you can tell people so. But even then, you can't tell everyone. You reveal it to those closest to you, perhaps a room answering disciple or two. People who do otherwise simply delude and confuse beings by indulging in a gross, false claim. If you have not attained the way, and you claim you have, if you have not been satisfied to the fruition, and you say that you have, you are telling a huge lie. During the Qing Dynasty in China, lived the high monk Elder Master Yin Guang. The master was from Shanxi. After he left the home life, he made a pilgrimage to Po Tau Mountain, the Bodhimanda of Quanzhen Bodhisattva. He went into seclusion there. He locked himself in a room and read the Tripitaka. If one reads every day, it takes about three years to finish reading the Tripitaka. He repeated this three-year cycle of reading the Tripitaka over and over for eighteen years. During all those years, he never left the mountain. At the end of that period, a group of lay people in Shanghai. Invited him to lecture on the Amitabha Sutra. He agreed, but not too many people came to the lecture series, perhaps because it was difficult for them to understand his Shanghai dialect. But among those who did come was a high school student from Shanghai who had had a dream in which she was told to go listen to the sutra. The dream said. You should go to such and such a lay community and listen to the Amitabha Sutra being lectured there by Great Strength Bodhisattva. The next night, the student read in the 
and in the newspaper that Dharma Master Yin Kuang was lecturing the Amitabha Sutra at that very place. Why did my dream tell me that Dharma Master Yin Kuang is great strength Bodhisattva? She wondered. That night, she attended the lecture, and after everyone had left, she related her dream to the elder Dharma Master. When she concluded that he must be great strength Bodhisattva, Dharma Master Yin Kuang was very displeased, and he warned her, "You cannot go around talking such nonsense." So she never talked about the dream, but she took refuge with the elder Dharma Master. Three years later, the master entered the stillness, and it was only then that she told about her dream. Everyone was upset that she had not told them sooner, so that they could have requested more dharma from the elder master. But she told them she had been forbidden to speak of it by the master himself. From this incident, it is clear that Elder Master Yin Kuang was in fact a transformation of great strength Bodhisattva. When he was cremated, there was many sharira. So, when one's life is about to end, some hints can be given, but still one can't speak openly about such things. Perhaps in a dream, as in this case, a little indication can be made. But one cannot state anything flatly, like "I am great strength Bodhisattva." That's not the way it's done. People these days go around claiming to be Buddhas. This is a direct opposition to the teachings of the Surakama Sutra. Of course, all living beings are Buddhas, but you have to cultivate to become a Buddha. If you don't cultivate, you're more likely to be a horse, cow, pig, sheep, or chicken. You're likely to become a hungry ghost or fall into the hells. Nothing is for certain. Sutra. When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must also see their own lying. This is a fourth clear and unanswerable instruction on purity given by the third kaman and the Buddha of the past warned on it once. Commentary. Ananda, do you hear this? When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi. We must also see the all lying. This means all kinds of exaggeration and boasts. For goodness' sake, don't say I'm enlightened, or I've been certified to the fusion, or I'm a Buddha, or I'm a Bodhisattva, or I'm an Arhat. That's just too cheap. This is the fourth clear and unanswerable instruction on purity. Given by the first commands and the Buddhas of the past, won't on at once. Don't teach others to lie, and make false claims. This instruction is given by all Buddhas of the present, and all Buddhas of the past. Sutra. Therefore, Ananda, one who does not cut off lying is like a person who carves a piece of human excrement to look like chandana. Hoping to make it fragrant, his attempting is the possible, the impossible. He is attempting the impossible. Commentary. I'll give you an example. Therefore, Ananda, you should realize that one who does not cut off lying is like a person who carves a piece of human excrement to look like a chandana, hoping to make it fragrant. Someone who hopes to become pure without cutting off lying is like a person who tries to make a piece of incense out of a piece of sheet. He is attempting this in the impossible. He'd never get the excrement to smell like a chandana incense. This means if you lie, it's as if you smell bad. If you cultivate chan samadhi, trying to become a Buddha and yet you continue to lie. You are just like a piece of excrement. For a liar to try and become a Buddha is like trying to get a piece of shit to be a sweet-smelling Buddha image. That's beyond reason. Sutra, I teach to be sure that the straight mind is the Buddha mind, and that they should practice the four awesome departments in all their activities. 
since they should be devoid of all falseness. How can they claim to have themselves attained the dramas of a superior person? Commentary. I teach the bishops that the straight mind is the body manda. Here, the reference to bishops includes all four assemblies. You can't say at this point, I'm a lay person, so the Buddha isn't referring to me. You have to be straight in what you think and say, don't be right about. Don't be deceptive. Not having a straight mind is also like trying to get incense out of excrement. I tell them that they should practice the four awesome departments in all their activities. This was discussed in detail earlier. There are 250 space to each of the departments of standing, stand, sitting, walking, and lying down. You should always do things truly and utterly cultivate. Since they should be devoid of all falseness, how can they claim to have themselves attained the dramas of a superior person? How can one say of oneself that one has been certified to the fruition of a bodhisattva or an ahat? One may not speak that way before one has heard the sutras. One may be quite casual in what one says. But now that you have heard the sutra, you know that you cannot say you have attained a certain levels of fruition. To do so is to speak a great lie. The retribution for it is to fall into the hell of pulling out tongues. In the future, your tongue will be hooked with an iron hook and pulled out by the root. Afterwards, you will have no opportunity to lie, for in the future, you will be mute. Sutra, that would be like a poor person falsely calling himself an emperor, for that he would be taken and executed, much less should one attempt to usurp a title of Dhamma king. When the cause ground is not true, the effects will be di distorted. One who seeks the Buddha's body in this way is like a person who tries to bite his own navel. Who could possibly succeed? Commentary that would be like a poor person falsely calling himself an emperor. Did you realize he would say that I am the ruler of this land for saying that he would be taken and executed? The emperor would immediately have him arrested and his whole family would be wiped out. All his friends and relatives would die in the process. Then where would the emperor have gone? To claim that you have attained the fusion when you have not is to be like a poor person who calls himself an emperor. He would be exterminated for it. And if one can't casually call himself an emperor on the worldly plane, much less should one attempt to usurp the title of Dharma King? How could one try to usurp the position of Buddhahood? When the cause ground is not true, the effects will be distorted. On the cause ground, when you are cultivating the way, if you do not cultivate truly, the effects you reap in the future will be cooked. There will be a lot of wrinkles. You will not be able to accomplish the fusion directly. If you cultivate in this way, you may do so for countless great ends, but you will still be unsuccessful. One who seeks the Buddha's body in this way is like a person who tries to bite his own navel. If you conduct yourself in this fashion, continually indulging in lies and boasts, and yet are seeking the body of the Buddha's, you are like a person trying to bite his own navel. How could possibly succeed? You could never bite your own navel because your mouth won't reach it.